Huh. That's new. Hey everyone, Brabuscus here, and welcome back to another Let's Watch of Death Battle. Today's episode, we got a fun one indeed. A fun one and an interesting one. That's Those are the those are probably the two best words I could use to describe this. We got Darth Vader from Star Wars versus Obito Uchiha from Naruto. Um, now, before we get into it, of course, there should be a link in the description below. You can go watch the actual episode yourself. Uh, go support the official release before watching some random guy on YouTube react to it. Okay? Got it? Cool. Um, <laughs> so... Ain't that a thing? <laughs> um, I finally put lights up on that shelf and moved stuff around a little bit and took some stuff off. Um, uh, which is why you see... Um, fun, funny for uh, this episode, I got this guy on my desk instead of on that shelf over there. Um, so, I'm just gonna put you right here. So... Yeah, just thought I'd point that out, because I think it's kind of cool. Uh, I've had those lights since, like, what? Christmas, I want to say. And I never put them up. Now I did. Funnily enough, I put them up immediately after I recorded the last episode's uh, reaction. Um, anyways, uh, enough about that. Let's talk about this episode. So Darth Vader versus Obito Uchiha. Um, so... Well, as it should be obvious by the fact that I have a, a Darth Vader figure on my desk, I am a pretty big fan of the character, um, uh, and I like Star Wars quite a bit. Um, um, I mean, I don't really think an explanation is needed. It's Darth freaking Vader. <laughs> um, uh, if you don't like, if, if you don't like Darth Vader, I question. I, I have questions. Um, um, I mean, I guess opinions be opinions, but still. Um, as for Obito, um, well, I think I've said on the, these reaction videos before, I must have because we did Madara. Um, never really was a big fan of Naruto. Um, uh, it was just never something I really got into. Um, I, I, at this point, it's one of those shows where I'm like, it's one of those things where it's like, I'm familiar enough with the characters, um, or at least a handful of the characters, but I am not crazy fond of the series itself. Um, um, I don't know. I don't really know why I was never really into Naruto. I just never was. Maybe if I actually like, like sit myself down, binge through it, maybe I'll get something out of it this time around as opposed to before, but... Uh, it was never really my cup of tea, but I guess we'll see. Maybe this episode will, uh, I mean, the Naruto death battles as of, uh, uh, as of late have been really good, so, um, well, most of them anyway. Um, so, I don't know, maybe this will be the episode that convinces me to watch Naruto. <laughs> um, or at least, like, watch it in full. I've seen, like, a couple episodes of Naruto, um... But, um, yeah. And then, I mean, I guess for Star Wars, just to, to, to be fair, I guess. Um, I've seen all the movies. Um, I watched... I, I need to binge through Clone Wars. Like, I need to, like... Clone Wars is one of those shows that I, I, like, I would watch all the time as a kid. But I never really, like, sat down and watched all the way through it. Like, I... There, there are episodes of the Clone Wars that I haven't seen. Um, um... So, yeah, um, and then, uh, I haven't seen much of Rebels, um, I saw Obi-Wan, the Obi-Wan show that came out last year, and I, for one, I don't know what the popular opinion on that show is, but I, for one, think it's pretty good, um, I, for one, like it quite a lot, um, and whenever Vader was on screen, oh my gosh, um, um, I've played Jedi Fallen Order. I have not played Jedi Survivor, um, but I am familiar with its story. Um, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't. I, I struggle to call myself a hardcore Star Wars fan, but um, but I like it quite a bit. Um, so uh, I mean, if if it wasn't obvious, I'm rooting for Darth Vader. <laughs> um, um, 
Vader is legitimately like one of my favorite villains out there. Like he's super cool. Um, oh. um, and he just like is the, like the embodiment of presence. You know, like he like every time he's on screen and you hear that iconic breathing, you know you you know things are about to go down. Um, so, I mean, just off like the level of iconography, I guess. Sure, we'll go with that. I'm ready for Darth Vader to stop principal. Um, uh, so I want Vader to win, and I want him to win pretty bad. Uh, nothing against Obito, but um, I like I like Vader a lot, and recently my preferred characters have kind of been sucking it up. So, like, I have one preferred character win this season. I would like to change that, if at all possible. <laughs> um, that's okay. When we get to Cole versus Alex, everything will be everything will be everything will be better, hopefully. Um, so, but uh, the obvious question is isn't um, who do I want to win? The question is who do I think is going to win? And in that regard, I have an idea, but I'm not crazy confident in it. I'm hoping the analysis will either uh, convince me further or sway me the other way. Um, well, I mean, I hope it doesn't sway me the other way. I think Vader's going to win. Um, and I'll tell you why. Um, um, okay. So, if this was Vader, if this was Darth Vader versus, like, base form Obito, um, because they're probably going to give him the Ten Tails. Um, well, actually, I know they're going to give him the Ten Tails. I was at RTX and I saw the preview. Um, uh, but just regular base form Obito does not stand a ghost of a chance against Vader. Um, he is significantly weaker, significantly slower, I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't know, I've heard speed kind of get thrown around a little bit, but I'm pretty sure he is significantly weaker than Vader. Um, and yeah, he has intangibility, but it's like, okay, so Vader's not gonna, like, cut through him with a lightsaber, but Obito's not gonna damage him in any way, shape, or form. He does have, uh, Obito does have Kamui, but I'm pretty sure if Vader's faster than he can uh, he can just avoid Kamui especially with like force speed and um, precognition like with like with uh, Obi-Wan and Kakashi um, um, but pretty much everything changes when we get to the Ten Tails form um, the Ten Tails Jinjiriki as it's called um, um, but even then I'm pretty sure from everything I've gathered it sounds like Vader is still the stronger of the two. Um, again, I'm not sure on speed. Both have like crazy speed feats and both upscale from those crazy speed feats quite a bit. Um, uh, Obito loses his intangibility, so Vader can actually damage him now. Um, um, but he has like, he still has Kamui, but again, I think Vader can avoid it. Um, but then there's the true seeking orbs. Um, um, the truth seeking or the I from everything I've gathered it sounds like the truth seeking orbs are kind of the big problem here um, because if they touch Vader that's bad news um, but I think you know Vader could either just block it with a lightsaber I have yet to see a single argument to uh, declare otherwise um, or like he can make like barriers with the force um, um, so he could like block the true seeking orbs. Of course, if Vader's slower, that could be a huge problem. But, um, but everything from everything I've gathered, I just don't know if he is. Um, um, basically, what this boils down to is that Vader has the stats, but Obito isn't like terribly far behind, and he has a lot of win cons. But Vader has a lot of win cons as well, and he could just overpower Obito. Um, so, I don't know. Um, I'm obviously not confident, but I'm going with Vader on this one. Um, uh, but also, like, for Kamui, for, like, uh, sucking Vader into, like, another dimension or something, um, that's controlled with the Sharingan eyes, right? What's stopping Vader from, like, using the Force to crush them? I know Vader knows Shatterpoint. Vader fell over. <laughs> um, I'm going to put him right back here. 
All right, that was interesting. Um, so I know Vader knows Shatterpoint, so I don't know what's stopping him from discovering, like, hey, the eyes are important. I should crush them. Uh, neither that or just crush them anyway. I know Vader is, like... I don't think Vader's ever, like, willingly crushed eyeballs before, but... Um, it's not like... Um, it's not like Obi-Wan where it was like, yeah, the Jedi Code is a thing, um, but... Like, Vader, Vader absolutely could just decide, hey, I'm going to crush an eyeball today. And he does in the RTX preview. Um, I feel comfortable saying that because now that this episode is out. Um, yeah, I was at RTX, so I saw an uh, extended preview of the fight, and Vader does just straight up crush Obito's Sharingan eye. I've heard that he has extras, but, like, I don't know what's stopping Vader from crushing those as well. Um... Or, like, realizing, hey, he's swapping out eyeballs because that's a thing. Um, why don't I just blow them all away? Like, why don't I just, like, get rid of them, you know? Um, I don't know. Again, I'm obviously more... Um, I'm obviously more knowledgeable, more invested in Vader than I am Obito. So, obviously, I could be getting a lot of info wrong. Um, but... With that said, I think I'm just going to stop talking and get right into it, uh, because I've been looking forward to this fight for quite some time. Let's do this. This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by Brandon Yates. Again? Huh. So is Brandon doing the track for this one? Okay, anyways. Darth Vader, Dark Ward of the Sith. Obito Uchiha, secret leader of the Akatsuki. Prime examples of how you could die a hero or live long enough to become a villain. He's whiz and I'm sure enough. And it's our job to analyze the weapons, weapons, armor, armor and, and skills, skills to, to find out who, who would win a death, death battle. battle. The fight looks really good, by the way. I'm really long into it. Time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, the Gotta start it with that, huh? The Galactic Empire ruled everything. All thanks to the super powerful super Man, that scene. Darth Vader. But beneath his spooky mask lay the husk of former I honestly kind of liked Rogue One, but As a child of most of it was carried by that scene. This like sand. There it is. <laughs> his fellow slaves as a heroic Jedi. Lucky for him, he met Qui-Gon Jinn, a Jedi who believed little Annie was the chosen one and would bring balance to the Force. No pressure, right? So he no, not at all. To become the papa he never had, or so was the plan until. Yeah. Instead, <laughs> Qui Gon's apprentice became Anakin's mentor. But while Anakin sought a father figure, Obi Wan saw him as more of a brother. I'm sure that won't cause any awkward tension whatsoever. Drama no, definitely aside, not. Anakin quickly became a powerful Jedi. He excelled in lightsaber combat and the Force, an energy field that binds all living things together. The Force lets Jedi move stuff with their mind, fend off mental attacks, predict the future. Yeah, so Genjutsu is out of the question. The droids they're looking for. They're basically space wizards. Through rigorous True. training and a not unnoticeable natural talent, Anakin was particularly skilled in the Form 5 lightsaber fighting styles. Xian and Jem So. Also known as the Way of the Crate Dragon. You know that big sand dragon? I love hearing about the different lightsaber forms. Yeah. Make that a lightsaber. Form 5 is incredibly versatile. Well suited for defending like between Yoda, Obi Wan, and now Anakin. Focuses on blending parries with devastating counterattacks, aiming to win duels through overwhelming pressure. Perfect for the Padawan who just bulldozed his way through training to become a Jedi Knight. Even as a newly knighted Jedi, Anakin could keep up with some of the most experienced Jedi masters and Sith lords of his time. But he had. He is the chosen one after all. With. Like his late blooming rebellious teenage angst. I mean, you don't just throw a kid into space monk school and expect him to forget everyone he ever cared about, right? Well, yeah. Really, that's what he was supposed to do. The life of a Jedi can be difficult and cold, something he yeah. could not accept. And so, rather than let his secret wife die in childbirth, he was seduced to the dark side through the promise of power. And so began his Jedi kill streak until Obi Wan gave him a for how much of for man. how much for, for how heroic the Jedi seem to be. But thanks to his new Sith their way of uh, going about it kind of sucks. <laughs> was saved, reborn, rebuilt. He was now Darth Vader. Vader is a gotta have the breathing in there. Everyone knows it, and they're terrified of him. I mean, oh, this part that that's that comic panel is so cool. Might be surprised by its 
quirks. See, while the Jedi view the I recognize this music. Ally, the Sith see it as a tool from which they draw power through passion and emotion. Most potently, negative emotions. Palpatine trained Vader by not only making him believe he killed his wife, but also ensuring he would never forget the monstrous machine he had become. By making the suit suck ass and piss him off. Seriously, pretty much. The, suit. the armor would beep at random times just to annoy him, and the life support system was outdated from the start. Sometimes it would even turn off for several minutes. That doesn't seem that... right for someone with burnt up lungs. And it was so no, it heavy doesn't. and clunky that he could barely walk sometimes even resorting to moving himself with the force. Oh man, I knew Palpy was evil, but I never knew he was such a dick. Well, yeah. despite these issues, the armor fulfilled its true purpose, crafting Darth Vader into the equivalent of a slasher movie villain commanding a galactic army. Nobody wants to mess with him. Thanks to the dark side of the force, he can make maelstroms that blast everything away, form barriers that shield from all sorts of attacks, and choke anything that's even a minor inconvenience. Hell, <laughs> sometimes he skips straight to crushing your lungs. One time, a droid named I-5 tried to kill Vader with a laser stated to move 300,000 kilometers per second. That's light speed, and Vader easily blocked it. Hi, I'm Darth Vader. <laughs> Bullshit is Palpatine threw at him. Vader was tough enough and stubborn enough to push through it. Palpatine knew that Vader would eventually try to kill him and take over the Empire. It's how the Sith work. So yeah. he constantly fanned Vader's hatred by sending assassins after him to make sure he was still worthy of being his apprentice. Oh, that's nothing. One time, he blasted off most of Vader's robo-limbs, destroyed his armor, dropped him back on the lava planet, and told him to make his way back without the Force. An impossible Wow. Task, yet one Vader accomplished. Yeah, because he really, really, really wants to kill Palpatine. <laughs> and that hatred is apparently useful in keeping Force wielders alive, and has sustained many Sith in conditions that would otherwise kill them. I'm sorry, True. he should have hated a little more. <laughs> Vader has killed hundreds, possibly thousands of Jedi, including Obi-Wan himself. He's fought entire armies on his own, he even taken on monsters the size of mountains. He's so mm -hmm. unstoppable, an assassin droid hired to kill him quit the job because he calculated that Vader was impossible to kill. And All right. <laughs> material from the old Legends canon, a real deep cut, we know. Lesser dark side users like the Night Sister Sherall overpowered the Sunstar, an ancient artifact capable of shifting moons. A feat which oh. requires energy worth over 12 septillion tons of TNT. That's 24 zeros. But if you cool. want something more recent, here's a planet blowing up while Vader was on it. And he's fine. But thanks to <laughs> his incredible power and the mercy and trust of his secret son, Vader would eventually avenge the atrocities of Palpatine. Even more important, he finally saved someone he loved. Ultimately, Anakin Skywalker truly did bring balance to the Force. He was the chosen one after all. Okay. Good for him. The leader of the Hidden Leaf Village and their strongest ninja, respected and loved by all. The few have attained this title. I didn't know that Vader straight up survived the planet exploding underneath him. That's interesting. Both help people and be acknowledged by the rest of the village. And what better way to do that than having your face carved into a mountain? If you think I'm talking about Naruto, guess again! This <laughs> is the story of Obito Uchiha! Obito unfortunately lacked the natural talent for ninja arts attributed to his Uchiha bloodline. So Damn. he signed up for ninja school and eventually joined a team with his rival Kakashi, his crush Reem, and their leader Minato. Where do you think I can get into a ninja school like that? Okay, is it Minato or Minato? I've heard it both ways. A limited form of physical and spiritual energy that exists inside all human beings and, naturally, can be weaponized. He can use it to run up walls and make clones of himself, but even better, blow shit up! This is ninjutsu. Among its many techniques include elemental attacks, and the Uchiha specialize in all things fire. Big fireballs, small fireballs, waves of fire, columns of fire, you name it, they've got it. So when Ninja World War 3 came along, it totally made sense to get this fire ninja involved at the age of 11. Oof. Well, lucky for Obito, he had one more secret weapon up his sleeve. Er, I suck it. The Sharingan! The Sharingan grants these freaking things, vision, allowing someone to see the flow of chakra, predict an enemy's attacks, cast a variety of genjutsu illusions, and even break out of said illusions. Too bad he didn't get to use the red eyes much. Like 10 minutes after he got the damn things, he got smushed under a big rug. What a way to go! But since Yikes. he wasn't expecting to use his super eyes anymore, he handed one off to Kakashi. And then he died. The end! Damn.
Just kidding! Yeah. Miraculously, <laughs> Obito survived long enough to be rescued by another Uchiha, the legendary Madara. Madara granted Obito a new body, regenerating the limbs he'd lost. You're probably thinking, oh, what a swell guy. Except he was not. Madara no. was brewing some plans for world domination and needed a pawn to carry them out. So he tricked Obito into watching Kakashi kill Reen, making him fall victim to the Uchiha's curse of hatred. Within the Uchiha clan, there exists an ideal of being extremely devoted to love. It has been speculated that if a particularly powerful Uchiha loses someone important to them, that love will be replaced with an all-consuming hatred. This is how Obito awakened his Mangekyo Sharingan. This is kind of sound like the dark side of the force. The Mangekyo gave him a new jutsu called Kamui. With it, he can suck his foes into another dimension and leave them there to die. He can even hide weapons in there until he needs them, like his gun by fan. But even better, he can phase through stuff. Well, not quite. Kamui gives Obito the power to move through objects in a manner that's similar to the common phasing superpower akin to the Flash or Kitty Pride. In reality, it's much more yeah. complex. As Obito is actually teleporting parts of his body into the Kamui dimension whenever they overlap with other matter. Yeah. See, there's his body parts right there. Well, if it looks oh. like a duck and talks like a duck, it's phasing. Hands up! Yeah! Way later on, he also nice. got another super eye. Man, he's really swapping these things around like a prime sub on Twitch. <laughs> Renegon grants Obito the power of the I like that. Path giving him some nifty abilities like controlling gravity with the Deva path, ripping out souls with the human path, and summoning giant monsters with the animal path. With all of the awful stuff he'd gone through, Obito realized that the ninja world was corrupt to its core. His dream of everyone being happy and working together was never gonna happen. So instead, he agreed to carry out Madara's giga brain plan to control everything. Donning masks and multiple personas, he recruited a number of rogue shinobi to form the Akatsuki, Akatsuki. Terror and kicked off Ninja World War 4. All to revive the monstrous Ten Tails. I know what you're thinking. Wasn't the whole point of this to stop war in the first place? And that's a very good question. <laughs> anyway, the Ten Tails! <laughs> a living mass of near inexhaustible chakra, the Ten Tails possesses tremendous power. It can create massive thunderstorms and hurricanes, multiple clones of itself, and the devastating tailed beast bomb. Forget bomb! That's basically a super nuke! This chakra ball is so explosive, it can eclipse continents and reduce mountains to dust. Comparing the surface area of this blast to the surrounding mountains, dispersing that much mass within a fraction of a second must have yielded a kinetic energy worth over 13 septillion oh. tons of TNT. That's 24 zeros! Again, Obito <laughs> wanted that power for himself. Wasn't Vader's thing like 12? No with anyone to get it. He's held up against master ninjas like Kakashi, Minato, and even Naruto in his monster energy drink form, which could outmaneuver the fastest attack from the lightspeed Rakage. And he far surpassed all of them when he finally sealed the Ten Tails within himself, becoming its Jinchuriki. This little makeover granted him unlimited flight, power rivaling the legendary Sage of Six Paths, and the truth-seeking orbs. These special little bowling balls can shapeshift into any form the user wants, like a stab, giant arms, an umbrella thing, or this crazy spiral blade that apparently helped shape the whole world. Oh, holy shit, it's huge! The truth-seeking <laughs> orbs can completely disintegrate anything they touch at both a molecular and spiritual level. Only those with the power of the six paths can resist their effects. Plus, with the mango mm. monster in his system, Obito's regeneration got amped to the point where he could survive having half of his body control alt deleted away. All cards in his hand, he was ready for the final stages of the Giga Plan. He summoned the God Tree and prepared to launch the infinite Tsukuyomi, a powerful illusion that would trap the entire world in a never-ending dream, free of conflict and sorrow. But the violent cruelty of the ninja world could only quiver in fear when the anime protagonist walked in the room. <laughs> After getting one tuned by some talk no jutsu, Obito saw within Naruto the spirit of his former self, someone who was always trying to help others. And they'd say his heart grew three sizes that day. Obito joined Naruto and Kakashi in saving the world, giving his life to protect his friends. And in his last moments, he entrusted them with reaching the dream he had so long ago to become Hokage, of which they both succeeded. Though he may have lost hmm. his ninja way, Obito Uchiha overcame his hatred and helped realize the world he wanted. Good for him. Again? He can't keep getting away with it. He won't. 
Actually, he will because we love him. This episode hmm. of Death Battle is sponsored by Brandon Yates. Dive into the thrilling world of versus music as Brando brings hypothetical matchups to life through his like mission. Using Dragon Dance. Brandon is one of the composers behind Death Battle, bringing the awesome tunes you love to rock out to. Hollow Dreams, Princes of Pride, Hedge of Tomorrow, some of our all time greats. In fact, he composed the track for this very episode. Please oh. support Brandon's work and enjoy more really? of his music by subscribing to his channel and following him on Spotify. Have you ever had a matchup that you want to see on the show and you just wish you had the music track for it? Well, yes. fans of Death Battle have been loving Brandon's hundreds of commissioned tracks for years. Everything from hard rock to jazzy to electronic to orchestral choirs. And because Brandon is literally one of the main composers of this show, every track he makes sounds straight out of Death Battle itself. Love the music from Death Battle? Then don't wait! Subscribe to Brandon Yates' YouTube and follow him on Spotify right away. All right, the combatants are set. We've run the data through all possibilities. It's time for a Death Battle! Oh, and pause. Oh boy, <laughs> um, they, they definitely made Obito sound a lot more impressive than, uh, than Vader. Um, hold on, real quick, I'm gonna check something, cause for, for, uh, for Obito they had the 13, whatever, like, the amount of, whatever the amount of zeros, wasn't Vader's like 12? Yeah, it was 12. Hmm. Hmm, okay. I just realized the mistake I made, but alright. Um. Um. Oh, that could be a problem, actually. Um. I mean, it doesn't sound like that's terrible. I mean, I don't know how that compares to Vader surviving a planet exploding, but, um. Um. They had both move at light speed, and they had they had a uh, black black boxes that said um, that there was feats that make them faster. Um, I feel like I'm being swayed over to Obito, honestly. And I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that one bit. Um, greater the the. The similar speed, the um, the truth seeking orbs. They did bring up the force barriers. I don't know. I want to say Vader wins so badly, but I I think I'm gonna move on over to Obito. I'm hoping that the uh the the episode proves me wrong. Um, but, um, okay, yeah, I guess I'm gonna go with Obito, um, similar speed, um, superior power, superior, uh, overall, overall power, though Vader's not terribly far behind in that regard, um, 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 and then stuff like the true seeking orbs, um, and most of that was all. Most of those feats they brought up for Obito was also in his base form. Uh, at least I'm pretty sure. Um, uh, the Ten Tails form is a different story. Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna switch on over to Obito, and I, I don't feel very good about that. But you know what? <laughs> Let's just watch this episode and hope I'm wrong. I sense your fear. Come on, Vader. And a power. I will be taking it. That power will save I do like the voices a lot. You'll have to pry it from my cold, dead hands. Then you will die. What? Apparently, I just can't go wrong with Nicholas Andrew Louie. <laughs> Too easy. I expected more. 
<laughs> I won't disappoint. I like that exchange a lot. And goodbye. <laughs> They really make Vader, like, again, just they give him that presence that he has in the movies. Just walking through everything. And cast preview ends here. But that's not all I saw. There goes the Sharingan. And okay, and now his metal leg is showing. You've lost your humanity as well. On the path of the dark side, it is inevitable. I like that exchange a lot too. It's so interesting seeing all this in high def now. Nay! And uh, RTX preview ends here. Oh shoot! There's a tree. No. This is inevitable. Ten tails. Vader's still doing pretty good. Vader! Again with the arm! Oh shoot! <laughs> Just throw it! Oh, I thought he was gonna throw it at him! I don't like where this is going. Oh. What the? You are liberated from hell. Find peace in the next life. Oh no. This was a fairly complex matchup. Both Darth Vader and Obito were roughly even in power and speed, so it truly came down to their skill and arsenals. And boy, did they have some deep bags and tricks. Even some of the same tricks. Both could fend off mental attacks. Both could move things around with their minds. And they both even had options to instantly kill each other. Vader could simply force crush Obito's body, but Obito could just as easily rip out Vader's soul. However, Obito had a few more impressive options available to him, edging out just enough to earn a win. For starters, Kamui made Obito extremely difficult just to touch, let alone injure. And as a Jin Cherokee, he could regenerate from half of his body getting destroyed. While the dark side could help Vader survive extreme conditions, it obviously can't regrow limbs. Plus, thanks to his wide array of jutsu, Obito would eventually overwhelm Vader. While Chakra may normally be a limited source of energy, unlike the Force, the Ten Tails provided Obito with an unlimited supply. And since Chakra is both spiritual and physical energy, this means Obito would be able to fight on indefinitely. Last but not least, Vader's preference for lightsaber combat means that he'd be up close and personal with Obito, right? Which left him vulnerable to getting disintegrated by one of the many truth-seeking orbs, or even worse, sucked up into the Kamui dimension. Yeah, don't forget about that. Not only would he have no way out, he probably wouldn't even be able to tap into the force while stuck there. Game over. Have mm. fun starving to death, I guess. Wonder how long you can feed on hate. Darth Vader may have had a tenacity that few others could match, but against Obito's similar might, busted regeneration, and overwhelming range of abilities, there was no escape. In the end, Vader's victory just wasn't meant to be. 
The winner is Obito Uchiha. Damn. Thanks for watching. That was Stay close. Tuned. We have a new death battle releasing every two All right. weeks here. And click Give me that next time. Perks and extra content. Planet level members even what do we got? battles before anyone else, so don't miss out. Oh! Whoa, whoa! Phoenix versus Raven! Okay. Wow! That's not what I was expecting at all. <laughs> That's gonna be fun. Um, huh. I actually don't know about that one. Um, I mean, I'm happy to see Raven again. Um, uh, I didn't really care for her last episode that much, so... Um, um, so I'm happy to I'm happy to see her back, um, and against who I thought was her best opponent from the start. So um, yeah, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Um, I actually don't know who wins that. Um, gut feeling is telling me that Phoenix wins. Um, um, but I guess we'll see. Um, uh, that's gonna be an interesting one regardless. Um, but, uh, as for this episode, hmm. Alright. You know, I, I'll take the L. Um. Um, I was really, I was really hoping Vader would win that, but I guess not. Um, he still put up a really good fight, and uh, the fight itself was still really cool. Um, definitely, definitely showed off Vader a lot better than his last episode did. Um, I just realized there's two returning combatants back to back. Hmm. Cool. <laughs> um. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, in general, it was a fun episode. You know, I was just, um. I was just really hoping, but. I'll try not to let that, um, I'll try not to let that ruin it for me, <laughs> um, um, because it was still a really cool, um, it was still a really cool episode, I really like that, um, you know, both, uh, Jason Marnoka and, um, uh, Nico Sangelui did a good job in the voices, Brandy did a good job in the track, what was the track called, actually? Um, there we go. That's no moon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, that's a fun one. That's a fun little nod there. Um, but, um, yeah, it was still a really cool fight. You know, I, um, I liked the general, like, presence that both of them had. Um, uh, the ending was really cool, you know, even though I was, you know, bummed out to see Vader lose. Um, uh, just seeing Anakin and Padme, um, um, that was a really nice send-off. That was, um, uh, oddly sweet for someone like, uh, Obito Uchiha. Either that or he was, like, screwing with them. You know, that's possible, too. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Fun episode, fun episode. I'm just bummed out now, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that was a really good episode, and I look forward to the next one. Um, I definitely have a lot less investment in that one compared to, uh, like, I have a lot less stakes in it compared to, like, this fighter, Stitch versus Rocket. So, either way, I like, whoever, no matter who wins, I, um, I think I'll be good. Um, um, I just hope Raven gets, um, better treatment both in the episode and in the community. Um, um, I say that there was, there's very few people who, um, really crap on Raven that much. Um, I just, I, I, I just hope that people don't instantly go like, oh, it's the Phoenix, it's the Phoenix Force. Obviously they win. Um, um, no, I think there's, I think there's more to it than that. Um. 
So, yeah, that should be a fun fight. Um, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. So that's all I have to say. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you all in the next video. Bye, everybody.